Today, we are going to talk about DRAM, a type of memory semiconductor. We briefly talked about DRAM in the previous video. DRAM has volatile memory that deletes the saved data once the power is turned off, but it offers a large storage capacity and fast speed. What makes DRAM work quickly? DRAM has cells, which are like rooms that save data. The more cells there are, the bigger the capacity is. Each memory cell has a transistor and a capacitor. And a capacitor uses 0 and 1, the basic digital data units, based on the charges, and saves data by distinguishing these two numbers. One cell is made of one transistor and one capacitor. The transistor works like a faucet, and the capacitor is the bowl for the charge. Out of many bowls, only the faucet for the bowl wanted is turned on to read or save the data. Thanks to this simple circuit structure, it's fast. But this bowl stores the charge only temporarily. Over time, the accumulated charge decreases, so the saved data naturally disappears even with the power on. As a result, dynamic RAM, or DRAM, needs a periodical refresh function to manage the data on it. But once the power is off, it cannot be refreshed, so the stored data is deleted. That's why it is called volatile memory. Then, is it always beneficial to have many cells per unit area? The answer is yes, but it also requires high technological skill. We can make the distance between transistors narrower. Then, chip size can get smaller, which means that we can get more chips from one wafer. In this way, the manufacturing cost goes down, the price gets lower, and power consumption is reduced. In other words, improvements in battery life of electronic devices. But once a chip size gets smaller, the capacitor, which acts as a bowl for the charge, gets smaller too. When the bowl gets smaller and thinner, the charge can leak from one cell to another, even before checking whether it is charged or not. This may cause some kind of errors. To minimize errors, high technological skills are needed. In the news, we often encounter the terms DDR4 or DDR5. The number shows the generation of DRAM products. And with each generation, the data processing speed and energy saving capacity are different. DDR is short for double data rate. Before we understand what DDR is, let's learn about a CPU's clock rate. The clock rate measures the frequency of digital signals made of zeros and ones. SDR sends signals once per clock cycle, while DDR transfers data twice per clock cycle. Simply put, one person can complete two jobs in 24 hours instead of one. Then, DDR5 is the fifth generation of DDR. DDR2 achieves speed beyond that of DDR. DDR3, DDR4, and DDR5 represent further improvements in memory technology. The speed doubles at the most with each generation while the operating voltages decreases as well as power consumption reduces. DDR that consumes less power is called Low Power DDR or LPDDR. Let's move on to the types of DRAM. First, what does a chip, a package, or a module mean? First, a chip is what we call a semiconductor, which is a small square piece cut from a wafer. A package means packaged semiconductor chips in a form suitable for the electronic device it is destined for. A module is a group of packages attached on a PCB substrate. Depending on its purpose, there are various types of DRAM. Mobile DRAM in a package form, DRAM for servers or PCs in a module form, and HBM for AI or supercomputers. If you want to learn more about the world of semiconductors, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. See you next time!